Hi, in this video I want to talk about CERT Unit 5, that's Light Search and Rescue Operations, and some of the adjustments and the modifications that we've made to this unit here in CERT Brazil. Now, first off, you remember that it starts talking about size up, team safety. Uh, when we talk about damage assessment, and they're going to decide what buildings that they can enter, which ones they can't. We have an activity that uses a PowerPoint uh, presentation and some photos that I've taken at different disaster scenes. Most of these have been here in, in Rio de Janeiro. Some of them were from, from other places where I've been. Now what we will do is we will divide, the, depending on the size of the group, either divide them into pairs or give each one of them one of these photos and a worksheet. Now, in the worksheet, they, they will make several selections. They will decide whether this, they'll write down the number of their photo and decide whether the damage has been light, moderate or extensive or structural damage. We will ask them whether they would allow their CERT team to go into that structure or not. Maybe yes, maybe they would allow, but only limiting the number of, of members and the time of, that they would stay inside that structure, or no, they would not allow the team to enter. And then I ask them to write down a list of all the hazards that they can see in that photo. Once they finish that, we'll put the PowerPoint up, and they will, we'll go through the photos. We will analyze, as a group, whether it's safe to go in or not. Now, I'm a little bit um, unfair with this particular exercise, as I do have some other photos in some of these buildings that have been taken from other angles or maybe slightly later. So for example, this building here, I have a photo that I took probably a couple of weeks later where the entire building has actually fallen over. And so sometimes a structure will look relatively safe from one side, but unless the team can, as much as possible, make that 360 degree walk around, they may not detect the, the structural problems from the other side. So this has been a great activity for both the young people and the adult CERT courses where they've been able to actually practice damage assessment skills using situations that are very familiar to them. Now, as we also go on, we'll talk about the uh, search markings. Now this is something that the search markings used, the structural marking standard used in the CERT course is of course a US standard, whereas there is an international standard for the NSIRAG, the UN International Search and Rescue Advisory Group, which is different to the model shown in the CERT manual. So I actually show both models because in an international context they may not be using the marking system shown in the CERT manual. Now, we also teach the whistle codes, at least the NSIRAG codes of silence, back to work and emergency evacuation. Now this is something I consider absolutely essential for every CERT team. Everybody has a whistle and they all know that the three one second whistle blast code means immediately evacuate the area. We'll often sneak that in to some of our simulated exercises to make sure that they've got that and often we will have in a simulated exercise or a deployment a safety officer who would be responsible for those codes. Now, as we move on towards the end of the search and rescue module, we talk about uh, patient extrication, we talk about cribbing, levering. There's two ways we'll do that, maybe, and again, particularly with the, the teens. We may actually use, here we have some, that one's rather injured, but we have some models, just some, some toy dolls, and some pieces of wood, where we can make up a, a, an example, you know, might be that this particular doll's buried underneath a piece of plastic, poor thing, and we show them how to use, obviously we'd be doing it from here, using the, the fulcrum, how the, the cribbing and the and lever principle works to extric extricate a patient. Once they've seen that working with a model, with a, with a doll or a toy action figure, we might then move on to doing it with, in, in real life, probably, once again with our good friend Bob. He might be lying on the floor, 
and he might have, for example, let's see if we can quickly just put the seam together. Bob might be trapped underneath one of our, our backboards and we would have to lift it up using the wood and maybe uh, just a metal bar so that we can teach cribbing and extrication. Now, finally, we will also talk about patient carries, both the, the single person and two person carries with equipment, dragging. This is a time where we may teach how to use the backboard with the head immobilizer. That's something I want to show just really quickly in the next and final video. We have some other options here for patient carries. Now, I know in the CERT manual talks about using blankets, and I'm sure that's a great idea in the US. We've had some unfortunate experiences with blankets here that maybe aren't up to quite the same quality, where they, they may not support the weight of a person. So what I really prefer to use both for training and even for the teams is like a just a simple stretcher that we can, this is, uh, actually ideal for a team too because we can carry it uh, into a back, in a backpack very easily and also use this instead of a blanket as we practice first with Bob and then later on with real people just how to do a blanket carry. Now equipment that I have found to be great but it's not part obviously of the standard CERT equipment is the SCED stretcher. You might remember the SCED, this version is not the high altitude version, it's or the, the high angle rescue version. It's just the sled where somebody, one rescuer can put the survivor on the sled and drag them away. So that's something that our team has. It's not obviously required. Uh, you'll also see that we have a, a C-spine or cervical collar. This is something that has actually gone out of the protocols, most protocols recently. I know uh, LA Cert haven't been using them for a while. Now depending on the group, we may show how that in some more extreme rescue situations, maybe using the scared, maybe using the, the backboard, it could still be a good idea to use to use the, the C cervical collars, the C-spine collars. Uh, we like these adjustable ones, but in the normal cert course we no longer teach these. Something else we have in our gear which can be very useful is just the, the thermal blanket, particularly when we're doing simulated exercises. So I think that's most of what we have for the search and rescue module, just it starts to get more practical. We may use uh, chair carries, obviously we're very careful to make sure that the chair will support the weight of the person. And we start doing the carries with Bob or with a mannequin, and then we work on with people. Thanks.